Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and Godot 4.1 first beta was just released. It's been about three months since Godot 4 was announced, so let's jump in and take a look at what we can expect in the 4.1 beta. And the first thing we've got is at the very beginning. Here I am in the project manager, and you're going to notice there are now tags. And you can filter things by the tag. So what I could do is I could come in here, I could pick a project like so, I could say, okay, and let's say this was just a um, maintenance. I'm doing a release here of maintenance release. I come in here and go here, we'll call it oh, all lowercase release, add a new tag, and then go, okay. So now tag something as release, and I can add that to my particular project like so. So now I have a release tag over here. I can come over to this guy. Okay, it is also a release thing. Add the release tag to it, and there you go. So now what you can do is filter down and just show things that are released or otherwise. So it just gives you a nice way to manage and toggle, and you know, instead of just deleting things like I constantly do, now I could actually just add some tags in and filter out what I don't need, which is pretty damned cool. All right, so now let's jump right into the Godot project. We're look at a couple more new features. Now, one thing you may have noticed right away is this cute little guy. Now, this is actually from GD Quest. I used it in the thumbnail for this video. Uh, they just released this guy as well. So it is an open source project MIT from uh, the GD Quest team. So if you need to have animated characters to play around with, there is this new GoBot one as well. So you see here, they got, they got a couple different ones. Um, and they've got animations attached to them. So this is GD Bot. We now have GoBot added to the list as well. Again, with a variety of different uh, animations attached as well. Uh, and then there's Sophia available. And yeah, I guess that's it. So those are the characters that are available right now uh, from the GD Quest team. They were just released to go along with this. So I figured, hey, let's do a twofer on this video. So if you want to go ahead and check those guys out, they are available. Uh, I'll have the link to the repository down below. It's MIT licensed. Cool work. Thanks, GD Quest team. All right. So back to Godot itself. Well, there's a lot of things I can't really show you that are new here. Uh, for example, and this is in experimental form, they're working on a new t um, node system so that your scenes, your, your um, any scene file can be run multi-threaded. That should result in a giant performance improvement when it comes. Now, the newest, most tangible new feature that they've added in Godot 4.1, though, is this. And I absolutely love this. Uh, in Godot 4, they moved it so that Godot could have multiple different windows, although they didn't really use it for anything yet. Well, now they do. You'll notice over here in your scripting, there is this make floating over here. And now what you can do is click on that button and things will float like this. So if I wanted to go ahead and dock this guy off to the side, I could like that. And then boom. So where you would normally use this, this isn't really that useful. But if you have multiple monitors like I do, I could drag this off to another monitor, which obviously you can't see because it's on a different monitor. Um, you could do that. The other thing is I could full size this window, etc. So it's not just um, the script editing window. It also applies to uh, the shader editor as well. So both of those can now make up their own window, uh, which is a very cool step towards multi-monitor support. So if you, like me, have multiple different monitors, you're going to love that feature. Now, the interesting thing is I don't know how to redock. So I, I think the only way to redock something is to close it. And there's a bit of a usability issue right there. Now, another thing that we've got going on, uh, there were some improvements to documentation. So for example, uh, enums are now better handled in the auto documentation generation. Uh, but one of the coolest new things for GD script is we now have this guy right here. You can now have static members. You used to be able to, you could have static functions before. Now you can actually have static members. So you can uh, persist data. The static basically is, um, it's not a global, uh, but it's basically a variable that never goes away. So uh, if you have um, a set of data that's common to all your classes, it's a very useful programming tr trick in that regard. Uh, there is some handling stuff for actually making the static go away and also for initialization beyond what we're going to cover in this video. But just know static uh, variables are now, st static member variables are now supported, which is pretty nice. All right, let's jump on over to the release notes now. And here we are. So I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the releases, so like Godot 4.0 and the first beta. And unless something really major happens in between, that's it. So I'm not going to cover release uh, candidates and that kind of stuff. So when this finally releases, so when Godot 4.1 ships, I will cover that as well. So I'm going to do major shipment, first beta, major shipment, first beta. Let me know if you like that coverage schedule. Uh, so what all do we have in this release? I'm going to skip over the highlights because we're going to go through a little bit of everything. Now, on the core side of things, there are some pretty major changes. So there's a uh, speed improvement. Now, I've heard 
heard of some people having some issues with this release. There's been a lot of things changing in the plumbing. So don't be surprised if you see some regressions. That's why this is a beta. Uh, but node management was tweaked uh, and it should make it more performant in, in a wide variety of cases. A couple cases, it might be a little bit slower. It's also going to take up a, a little bit more memory, but it should run a lot faster. So the underlying node system was reworked by one in the background. Definitely going to have an impact. Another thing that's changed here is... Um, the Godot engine uses a negative Z axis. So uh, most game engines use Z, either plus Z or negative Z. Uh, and then you got Unreal that does Z up because that's what they think of. Uh, so what negative Z means is basically uh, into uh, the viewport. So sorry, away from the viewport. So that means when you load something in, it, it actually seems to be backwards to you. Uh, now this is going to be some incompatibility with other people's way of working. So they've added a couple of ways of working with this. So there's now uh, to use model space with the look at method, uh, the switch front and back camera views in the editor to be consistent. And of course, uh, they fixed a longstanding path following bug in there as well. And they also brought back Delta uh, frame Delta smoothing that was introduced in Godot 3.4. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, C sharp side of things. Uh, C sharp at Godot 4 was mostly at parity with at, um, with this GD script support, but now it's uh, one step much closer because one of the big things that was missing was support for global classes, which has now been added. Again, you can click into any one of these release details to get more uh, details on how this new feature works, but now you can have global classes in C Sharp, which should be nice. Uh, also, the documentation was updated around that, and they also have now fine-tuned control over how your C Sharp is generated. This used to be at a project level, now it's at the export level, uh, so that's a change. I'm not really sure the impacts there personally. Uh, and then we go into the editor. I showed you this one earlier on. Now you can break off the script editor, also the shader editor, and there are basically their own separate windows. So you can drag them anywhere you want, which is very nice. Now, another really cool thing that they've done with the editor though, is this next part here, is they've actually made it so the persistence is better. You make tweaks to the editor now and you close down Godot, you start Godot back up and your tweaks should persist. That is definitely a nice improvement. Uh, then we had some fixes to, to something that was added in Godot 4. Uh, so inspectors had support for typed arrays and ability to export node types, but they didn't play well together. Well, apparently now they do. Um, and then editor improvement, we showed you this right off the hop of this video. You can now add custom tags to your projects, which is cool. Uh, GD Extensions got some love as well. GD Extensions is the new extensibility systems replacing GD Native. Uh, this is still a work in progress. It's beta at this point, but people are using it uh, quite successfully. One of the big areas they're working around is um, making it so that there's persistence. So if you create a plugin for uh, 4.0, 4.1, you can actually say, okay, I run on 4.0 or higher, uh, and then I'm binary compatible between these different versions. That means I could write a plugin for 4, and then 4.3 is released, and theoretically, it should still run. But if I need it to be 4.3 specific, I can say uh, in it, okay, so that's what this part here is. I can say um, in my extension, this is what I need to work. Should make extensions work better together. Um, overall. So just basically improvements in there as well. Now, another really cool thing with the GD extension improvements, uh, Yuri made it so it's now possible to visual shaders, uh, Visual shader nodes can be defined using extensions, so that's quite cool. Uh, and then a framework for custom editor plugins, which is also cool. So you can use GD extensions to create editor plugins, which is neat. Uh, GD script side of things, uh, again, some cleanup, bug fixes, and so on improvements. Again, the documentation now better handles enumeration types uh, and static methods are here. So if you want to read a little bit more about what that's all about, do be sure to check that one out. Uh, but static methods are now added back into, well, not really added back, but there used to be a hack or a workaround for supporting this kind of stuff. Now you don't have to. Now you can use static methods to handle that stuff, which is nice. And then some of the big things here are in the multi-threading side of things. I kind of mentioned on this earlier on, um, they are changing the node system so that nodes run uh, in multiple threads. Right now, a number of systems in Godot use multiple threads. So things like uh, rendering, um, networking maybe. I'm not 100% certain which subsystems do, but the majority of subsystems use multiple threads. One area that doesn't is nodes. And nodes are a really fundamental part of uh, the Godot game engine. So if your character, for example, you've written it as a, a TSCN file, it's got a bunch of code inside of it. Those all run on a single thread. So what they're going to try and do is make it so that you can have a um, multiple threads for multiple nodes. In some ways, this is essentially like uh, the job system for Unity. It's going to allow you to make things much more parallelizable. Also, obviously, there are 
are a bunch of gotchas in implementing something like this. Um, but yeah, you want to add multi-threading to the uh, scene system, and that could make a huge, huge difference. Also, some uh, improvements to multi-threading uh, in this one as well. But yeah, the scene multi-threading, that could potentially be huge, but it's going to take... 4.2, 4.3, and further. Right now, it is considered experimental. So yeah, don't use it in a live game. Uh, and then the navigation system got some improvements. So now it boasts dedicated 2D and 3D RVO avoidance systems, a new static obstacle avoidance mechanism, a system of layers and masks for obstacles and agents, and better debugging tools, which is, again, quite nice. And then on the rendering side of things, we've got a couple of improvements there. One of those just nasty whack-a-mole things, something about... Um, it just seems like Vulcan and shader compilation is just a giant pain in the ass. Uh, so a little bit more improvements to try and improve that so you don't get the stuttering as the shaders are compiled. Uh, Particles also got a big update here. So they, they actually were updated in 4.0, but they were reworked to better empower technical artists to create impressive and beautiful dynamic effects. Once again, you can actually drill down into the GitHub uh, article about these things and learn more about each individual new features. But basically, technical artists now have more control over the particle system, another thing that we got here is um, improve. Uh, so fix the existing shader uh, built-ins. And then over here, we've got a new 3D noise texture, which can add more depth to your volumetric fog or the behavior of your 3D particles. So those two have nice synergy there. And we've got downloads available. If you want to go ahead and check this one out. One thing to be aware of, if you are using Windows and AMD, uh, OpenGL renderer may crash for you. So make sure that you are using the Vulkan renderer at this point in time. Obviously, it is a known issue, and I will assume it will be fixed in times 4.4. 4.1 full release. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Godot 4.1. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. What's your favorite new feature? Mine, by far and away, is the ability to do breakaway of the uh, scripting layers. Uh, just definitely uh, having the scripting window and the shader windows being able to be on different screens. Huge huge deal changer for me. Uh, but I'm curious, what do you like best about this release? Have you checked it out? Are you having any issues? That's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.